Hello and welcome back to the Coaches Legacy channel. In today's video, we'll discuss how to create test cases for our React application using the Jest framework. So this video is actually part of a series where we take our React application and then deploy it to Azure DevOps, creating a continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline in which we run different things like um, unit testing, UI testing, many other things that we're exploring throughout this series. But don't worry, you don't need to have watched any of our previous videos in order to follow with this one. You just need to have a React application. Okay, that's all. So let's just take a look at my website over here. This is what the home page looks like. So there's this little counter over here that I've created for the purpose of this video. We're going to be creating a test case centered around this counter. So if I click plus, it's going to increment. If I click minus, it's going to decrement. So I want to create a test case that basically, um, you know, makes sure that, that this button is working. So when I make some changes in my code, then I don't have to go and check whether my button's working or not. The test case will automatically run and then it'll let me know whether the button is working or not. So a very simple way of knowing whether our button is working or not is that if we click on the plus button, this should become of one. Because if, if I just refresh, you'll see that the default is zero. So if I click plus, it should become one. And if I click minus, it should go back to zero. So this is what we're gonna be doing in today's video. We'll make a test case that checks for this exact scenario, okay? And in the next video, we're actually gonna explore how to take this test case and integrate it into our continuous integration pipeline in Azure DevOps. So let's begin writing some test cases. I'll come over here and let's take a look at our files. So you can see a lot of files in here, but uh, don't panic. Most of these are from my previous videos, like the Docker files over here and this Azure Pipelines file, and then the Tailwind and Post CSS files. Those are, you know, the Tailwind is basically what I'm using in this repo for CSS, kind of like Bootstrap. Uh, and the Docker and Azure stuff is related to Azure DevOps and the pipelines and stuff. So don't worry if you don't have these files. So let's begin writing our tests. I'll come over to the SRC folder, create a new folder called tests. And within this folder, I'm going to create a file called counter.test.tsx. Now I'm using counter because that's the name of our component over here and dot test is necessary. This extension is necessary so that Jest knows which files are the testing files. When we run the Jest command later in this video, it's gonna scan our entire repo for files with this extension. Then it's going to execute them. Then the dot tsx file extension is necessary because that's, way, that's the way my repo is set up. It's a, it's a TypeScript repo, so I'm using tsx. If you are using JavaScript, you're going to do JSX. Okay, so let's continue. I'm going to begin writing some import statements. And by the way, I've already downloaded all of these libraries or installed actually is the better term. So all of this is going to work for me. But don't worry, I will show you how to install these and which commands to run. Okay, and then components. Let's just see if the type hinting shows. There we go. Now I'm gonna begin writing our test. So do test, then increments counter, give it a name. Then we write a call back in here. All right, then we render the component internally, render component using this render function that we imported from the testing library. So we do counter, whoops, counter like this, okay. Then down here, we're going to select elements within the component. Let me tell you what that means. I'm gonna go over to our component. I want to show you that there's actually something you need to add to these components or a modification that you need to make. Take a look at these buttons. These buttons are the, are the things that we actually want to interact with and this paragraph tag. So do you notice anything different about them? It's this property, data slash, sorry, not slash, uh, dash, test ID. This is something that you need to do 
okay, if, when you're using Jest, it's basically a unique uh, ID of sorts that we're going to select it using. Okay, we're going to use this ID to locate the element and select it. So for example, this button has the test ID of increment. So what I'm going to do, counter um, increment button, increment button is equal to screen dot get by test ID increment. All right. So basically we are grabbing the element using its test ID, which is increment. And this basically is a reference to that button. We're going to copy this for the decrement button. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing for the counter for the paragraph tag screen dot get by test ID counter. That's the test ID allocated to it. So now we have these three elements, references to these three elements. So then we're going to begin interacting, interact with increment button. So we're going to do fire event. We're basically simulating a human action. So we're going to click on the increment button. Okay. Then we're, what we're going to do is that we expect this is kind of like a cert in Python, if any of you have ever worked with Python. Okay, so we do this. Expect the inner HTML of the counter to, to be 1. Okay, so I'm just going to do this for the decrement button as well. All right, and then it's going to be zero because we make it one, then we click on the decrement button and make it zero. We need to change that to the decrement button as well. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Now here's where things get a bit tricky. If you've set up your react application using create react app, then just comes bundled automatically with it. You don't have to do anything else. You are done right here. You don't have to set up anything. You don't have to install anything. You don't have to create any files. It's all done for you. You just need to run npm run test, or maybe it's npm test, one of them. Okay, and it's gonna work for you. Let me just show you what it looks like because I already have it set up. I've already set up everything on my end. I haven't used create react app actually. I've used Vite, V I T E, and maybe others have used this as well. It's pretty modern, it's fast. It, it loads very quickly, it builds very quickly. That's why I'm using it. But unfortunately, it does not come bundled with Jest. So you need to do that yourself. So I'm going to show you that right now, how I've set up my repo that makes this command work. See, as you can see, the test has been passed because we know our button is currently working. So yeah, let me show you how I did this. For those of you who created your repos using Create React App, you can stop right here. Okay. Now for the rest of you, let's continue on. First of all, we need to run some commands, all right? Some install commands. I've just compiled them all in here because I could not memorize these. So let me just quickly brief you on what these are. I'm not going to run these because I've already run them. I'm just going to, you know, paste these commands down in the description. I'll also include a link to my website where I've properly properly compile all of these into a proper article discussing these individually what they do etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so just to give you a brief overview this one installs the jest okay this one again installs the testing library and here actually is what you need to install if you have typescript if you have javascript and you've set up your repo using vite or something else you don't need to install this because Jest by default does not support TypeScript, so you need to install modules that basically allow it to read TSX files. Then you need to set up these two. I don't, I mean, these are a bit technical, but you'll get a, a warning messages like create an environment and stuff if you don't run these, so it's kind of important. So yeah, run these seven commands, then come back over to your Visual Studio code. So what you need to do is create this file first, .babelrc, 
you need to you need to create this one regardless of whether you have TypeScript or JavaScript. Okay, then you come down into your .es lint rc .cj or cgs, or it could be that just .js, depends on your repo and how you built it. And then you need to add these two. Again, you will add this whether you have JavaScript or TypeScript. Okay, you add this in the module.exports dictionary object and within the extends list. Okay, add these two. Then come down here into, you need to create this file. This, this is a file that you need to create if you're using TypeScript because this basically, uh, this line over here that you see, transform, it basically um, redirects all your TSX files. This is regex for TSX files. It redirects them all to this library, tsgest, that's compatible with TypeScript files. So, okay, and just to recap, you have to create this .babelrc file. You have to create this jest.config file if you're using JavaScript, sorry, TypeScript, this one, and you need to make this edit in here. One last thing that you need to do, go into your package.json, and over here, you need to do this, okay? Because by default, this command won't be here. It's gonna look like this. You need to add this so that you can run this npm run test command, okay? And then it's gonna run just for you. Let me just look at this. I don't think we're missing anything. The commands, um, the files with the M or the A are the ones that I have not committed yet to GitHub. So those are the ones I modified for this testing. Doesn't look like I have modified anything else, so that's pretty much it, okay? Okay, so once you've done all this, you can run npm run test, and then the tests will run as we did earlier, and hopefully they should pass. Okay, so we'll end the video here. I hope this was useful for you guys. I know there's so many different possibilities, so I'm, I know this video won't help everyone, but I, did, I do hope it helped as many people as possible. Anyways, in the next video, we're gonna take this test that we created, and I'm gonna show you how to deploy it, uh, or more specifically, how to integrate it into our continuous integration pipeline, so that whenever we make a commit to our repo, then this test is gonna run, basically uh, automat automatic testing, okay? So I hope you guys will be in that video, okay? Subscribe to the channel to stay notified for future updates. Later.